Hello and welcome to another Meet Malware video. Today we'll be taking a look at Gan Crab with the new version 5 coming in that has been getting a lot of traction lately, mainly distributed via the Fallout Exploit Kit. If you have an out of date browser, well watch out for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, but it does seem to take a little bit of time to activate. A lot of ransomware developers are adding delays into the encryption process just so that security researchers like me can't really understand what the file is doing very quickly using, say, a sandboxed environment. This, of course, is a full VM, so we will have no problems, but we just need to keep an eye on the actual activation point. The executable seems to be loaded. Now we just wait. We can take a look at Process Monitor, which should tell us what is happening right now. As you can see, lots of write requests already. Seems it goes for the network drives first. The actual test folder that is going to be um, pictures for this test has already been encrypted. Nice. So it didn't take that long to actuate this time. It still seems to be hammering my network drive. Let's see if we have anything in there. Oh yeah, we do. So it does destroy everything on the local network. So if you have files on another system as well, those are going to be encrypted. Now let's actually check out the backend of this ransomware. We do have Tor browser, so I can do that this time. This is your official decrypt message. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Let's open the onion domain. And as you will see in a moment, it will ask for some kind of authentication before it lets me in. So only the intended victims are the ones who are accessing their stuff because they wouldn't want unauthorized access. Think about the irony. You essentially just browse and upload the decrypt file here, which is unique for every system, I guess. And once you upload it, I think you will be able to decrypt like one file just to see that their method works. As you can see, I only have one day and 23 hours, 59 minutes to do this, so two days. And then the price is double. Just make sure you keep backups of your data. Be especially careful about network drives and how you connect to them, because a lot of ransomware these days is going to attack those first. This particular variant is detected by about 40 engines on first total, so you should be good if you use any decent AV. But of course, there'll be obfuscators and all that kind of thing involved when you actually get hit. I think I haven't made a video in a long time, and a lot of things have changed. I'm recording on a new system, completely different hardware, including mic, so let me know how all of that worked out. And yes, this is Windows 7 because I figured out that about half of the time I spend doing these videos is just fighting with Windows Update. I know there'll be a few of you out there who'll be like, oh, but it's completely irrelevant if it's Windows 7 and it's like, I don't care, okay? Go away. Seriously though, this is exactly the same thing. I am aware that there are threats that'll run in Windows 7, not in Windows 10, but I don't look at them anyway. This is just way less pain for me, and it's the exact same thing for most malware. Now, there does seem to be a little bit of a decline in the amount of new ransomware being produced. We haven't really had that many large-scale incidents after WannaCry and maybe Petya, not Petya. And cryptojacking seems to be a lot of the new focus. Not to mention with security moving higher up in the order of um, devices, essentially. A lot more attacks are going to be blockchain based or at a higher level. A lot of people are like, well, security is not a thing anymore. I'm perfectly safe. It's like, no, you're not. It's just that the problem is moving in different levels. So these are some great topics for security talks in the future where I might discuss in greater detail the implications of um, you know, having centralized security, let's say, and just relying on the cloud or the server to give you the legitimate version of the application and hoping that the official servers are always secure. There's obviously like a lot of downsides and upsides to that. That's a topic for another video. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like and share if you did. Thank you for watching. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.